Hey guys, ZBP Man here. Now this year when we uh, passed by CES, Nolan and I, we met with a company called Geniverse and they create generators, solar generators for home use. And this is important because as many of us are seeing, there could be either rolling blackouts or you can just lose power. Even in Chicago, we lose power uh, more than we'd like to on a yearly basis. Uh, so having a backup solution in your home is a great thing, but it's more than just having a backup. If you're looking for, let's say, a solution that you can use when you're tailgating, right, and you'd like to be able to have power to power your blender, your toaster, um, and a TV, you know, any kind of device um, in your home or outside of your home, this is going to work for you. If you're also looking for a solution that you can use, let's say, uh, in a camping site, this is going to work as well. And the cool thing about this solution is that it has renewable power. So not only can you plug this in and does, and it has one of the fastest charging rates that I've seen in a, I would say a battery backup or solar generator of this type, but then it also has an alternate way for you to charge it via the sun. So let's talk about the specs and we'll see why this may be something that you'll want to pick up. Highly recommend having one of these. So first of all, this is the Home Power Pro 2. Um, and it has a capacity of 2,419 watt hours. They do have a smaller version of the Home Power uh, One Pro, uh, but I really like the size of this one that we have here because of that maximum capacity that we're talking about. Now, it's rated at 2,200 watts. It has a surge power of 4,400 watts, and it comes with a lot of connectivity. It basically has two USB-Cs that are 100 watts, it supports the Qualcomm fast charging, so you can plug your phone and it does fast charging. It also has two USB-A ports, uh, three AC outlets. It has LED lights, right, so you can uh, turn that on, especially if you're in a campsite. And then it basically has uh, lithium iron, iron phosphate batteries. Now, these batteries, and this is an important part of this product, are one of the safest batteries that you can get on the market very similar to what you would have on your Tesla, and they give you a 3,000 uh, battery life charge cycle. So you can charge these things th over 3,000 times and have a very uh, good experience. Um, you also then have the ability to plug in some solar panels, and these solar panels are two of them that we have here on the channel, each one with a 200 watt input, right? So they're gonna capture the rays, and they're gonna bring 200 watts of power. Now, it supports, uh, by each one of the panel entries, 400 watts each. So that means if you had higher capacity panels, and I've seen panels that rate at 400 each, that means that you could have a total of 800 watts coming into this panel or into this uh, generator, which means that charging this is gonna be really fast. Um, even at 400 watts coming in, just shy of 400 watts, I was getting charging rates using the sun in Chicago during still the winter. I was getting charging rates of almost 334 close to 400 watts, which meant that I could charge the battery from half um, all the way up to maybe um, to 100% in something around three hours. But again, if you're charging it at 800 watts, that's going to cut the time in half even further. So uh, let's take a closer look at the actual generator itself, and we're going to see it in several different scenarios. We're going to see how you can use this, and we're going to show you also how it works outside and how it charges itself. Let's get right to it. Now the Geniverse Home Power Pro 2 basically has three AC ports uh, that you can enable here just by simply pushing this button and you notice the display will come up telling you how much power is being consumed and your uh, time remaining uh, and you'll notice that it also indicates how many watts are being consumed uh, and it'll give you a lot of information that you're going to see in a couple seconds once we start running uh, some you know, some power through this device. You also then have two USB-A to a USB-C here, and if I turn these on, you'll notice that it will also then light up. If I turn this off for a second, you can see it's still on. And you'll notice here that there's a Wi-Fi symbol. So there's a Wi-Fi app that we're gonna be able to see in a couple seconds so you can see how this works. You do have the power, the ability to turn on and off the display. You have a side light that you can uh, turn on. You know, this is gonna be great if you're camping. And uh, on the back side, what we'll see is there's a couple ports that you'll use to power the device. Now in the back, you'll find your standard AC outlet. There's really no brick, right? So basically you just take the power cord, plug it in here and you're set to go. These are your ports for your solar panels. Uh, the panels that we reviewed are 200 watt solar panels, but each one of these ports will support up to 400 watts, meaning that you can, if you have higher 
I would say, outputting solar panels uh, come up all the way up to, uh, what is it, 800 watts of power being inputted to this device. Now, we're going to plug this in. I just want to show you the charging rate because it's pretty ridiculous, uh, the amount of power and how fast this will charge. Now, we plug in the AC power to the Generiverse, and what you're going to see here is, like, look at the rate that it's charging. This is pretty ridiculous. Over 1,000 500 watts. So this is going to charge uh, this device really, really fast. This is why you're able to charge it so quickly. We have a variety of devices here that we're going to be charging so that you can see um, how well the actual uh, generator works. But the charging rate on this is ridiculously fast. I've not seen anything that can charge this rate and it keeps on increasing. So it's 1,537 watts uh, is where it's around um, and that's the charging rate. And you're going to see that in in minutes, it's going to fully charge, keeping in mind that we only had 10% left. All right, now we're going to put the Jennifer's through a couple tests. Um, but before I do that, I just want to highlight what you can expect from something like this. So depending on their freezer type, right, if it's consuming anywhere from 60 to 200 watts, this is going to be able to run a refrigerator freezer for 10 to 35 hours. If you're looking at a microwave, one to 14 days. If you're looking at a coffee machine, one to seven days, right? But it all depends on the power it consumes. If you're looking at an electric fryer, one to five days, blender, two to 14 days, and it just goes on and on and on. Important things like maybe if you have a CPAP machine, you're gonna be able to get three to 14 days out of this. And if you're looking at some type of uh, oxygen, device, like an oxygen concentrator, three to eight hours because of the kind of power that's going to be consuming. Now we're going to do a series of tests. We're going to basically run a toaster, a heating um, space heater, which is going to you know, really use up a lot of power, and we're going to run a heat gun that's going to run up a lot of power. Now I've used this to run my refrigerator, my home theater solution, both TV and projector with all the surround sound equipment without any problem whatsoever. Um, in this test, we're just going to see how much power we can force uh, through the device and see how well it responds. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the toaster. And the toaster was the first thing we turned on right here. And you're going to notice, this is the crazy part, 900 watts. That is crazy, right? When you really think about the fact that a toaster takes up that much power. And now our space heater, you can see the lights on. And we have it at the highest setting. I'm waiting to see that this thing is going to kick in. And there it's kicking in now. And you can see now 1,600, 1,700 watts are being pulled uh, from the Generiverse. And so it's still, still running, no overload at all. Now the next thing we're going to do is turn on this heat gun, because this heat gun is going to take up a lot of power. So we're going to do that. See how much? And it basically kicked up to 3,000 watts. And at that point, it stopped. All right, let's go ahead and do that again. So I'm going to turn things off. It overloaded. And you can see that there's that overload right there. So basically, that's protecting your, 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 your I would say, the generator and then all your devices. Uh, so this guy right here, this guy sucks up a lot of power. And just running this kind of overloaded it, but you'll notice that everything still looks great. All right, so we're going to try this again. Uh, we turned everything on. First of all, in order to get the overload situation taken care of, all I did is I pressed this button once to just reset it. So everything is good. Now you'll notice I have 980 something watts being pulled by this little space heater. If I turn on the heat gun, just to give you a sense of what's being pulled there, notice that 2,400 watts. That's how high it pulled up, right? If I do it one more step, Yeah, I think that's the max for our heat gun. Let's do that again. So it went down, and we'll do that again. 2,429, so that's pushing it to the upper limit. If we were to turn on the toaster, and then remember, that was like 1,000 watts, so this is gonna push it over 3,000. 3,000, 3,003 watts, and then it just kicked it off. So that's when the actual protection kicked in. Now the next thing we're gonna look at is how well does it power smartphones, right? So here I have a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. I'm gonna plug it in and I'm gonna power up the DC side and we're looking to see if it's gonna do ultra fast charging. The fact that little symbol popped up that you noticed and it was in teal means that it's charging the phone in the ultra fast mode. So now I have my Samsung getting charged and what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the electrical side. You know, I have two things turning on now. We're gonna actually, we already know that this is gonna be a little bit too much for it, so let's see. We have 1,000 watts, because I have my heater on. I'm gonna turn on my heat gun. 
and I have my heat gun, my Samsung watch, or my Samsung uh, phone being charged, and you're noticing that we're around 2,465 watts. So that's, uh, that's doing really well. And we're gonna see how long it can run at that rate, because it's pushing it right a little bit, I would say, uh, towards the upper end, and see if it stops. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is uh, take a look at the app as we're running power coming from the uh, Generverse. And what I want you to see is how quickly things respond. So right now, both outputs are on, and I'm gonna flip the switch. And you notice how the switch on the Generverse also turned off? And I turned them both off. So that's how fast things respond. We're gonna go ahead and turn on the DC, which is gonna charge my phone. And now what I'm gonna do is turn on the AC. All right, so both of them are running now at the same time. Okay, and there's a lot of things that you can do here also. Like you can change your charging settings if I go into this. And basically it's gonna say that it could support fast charging mode. You have quiet charging mode, which is gonna charge at a slower pace and you're not gonna hear the fan. This is gonna be great like if you're in a, in a setting where you're charging this um, and you're sleeping in the same area where you wanna make sure that you don't uh, wake up. Maybe you don't like the white noise that's generated by it. In my case, uh, we're good with that. Uh, you can also then see if we go into the app, you'll notice that it tells you how much draw is taking place right now. 1,033 watts um, is what's being consumed. And then again, if I turn on, let's say for example, my toaster, and I turn that guy on, it's jumping up to 1,920 watts. That's where it's hovering right there. We know that as soon as we turn on the heat gun, it's gonna push it up even higher. So we're gonna go ahead and cancel this so we can see that drop for a second. We're gonna turn on the heat gun. Heat gun, you notice, kicked it into 2,588. And we notice that even with having it at the highest rating, it's able to deal with the surge, but it's not able to sustain it if it goes um, beyond the threshold of what this has been certified to work with. So uh, that's pretty cool. Now we've plugged in the generator and we're taking a look at uh, the consumption as well as at the same time the draw that's taking place. So you can see that we're right now charging at 564 watts and we have an output of 994 watts. So obviously when you charge in, there's nothing uh, plugged in. It is charging at a much higher rate because it was well over a thousand more watts uh, when we were doing that unplugged. If I were to turn this off, let's see what happens. So we're turning this guy off. I'm going to see if the, oh, see that? As soon as we turned that off, we saw that the charging rate went up. I'm going to turn on the power and see if there's any change. All right, so we're pulling only 40 watts. Increase the heater, 600 watts, and you notice that the draw kind of goes down. And I'm going to bring it all the way up to the highest. It's going to be almost 1,000 watts, and you notice that the charging rate did go down. So that's one thing to be aware of. We're going to go ahead and turn on that, that fan, the actual heat gun, and see what it does to the actual charging rate. And you'll notice that from a charging rate perspective, it almost, yeah, well, it stopped right and it looks like the draw was too high for both charging and then powering my heat gun that was interesting so what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the ac right so that's going to reset it for us we're going to turn that back on and we can see that the heat gun again turned on we're going to see how long it takes before it stops 2325 watts Interesting. So notice that with the heat gun on and the heater on at the same time and it plugged into the wall, it seems that the output has dropped somewhat. It's not able to sustain powering both at the same time. All right guys, so ignore the Pomeranians that are running around our backyard. Uh, let's talk about the solar panel system for the Geniverse. Now each one of these panels that you see here have a total I would say output capacity of 200 watts. Now, what I've done is I've placed them uh, directly in the line of sight of the sun, and I'm getting around 343 watts of power going into the Geniverse that you see all the way over there in the corner. Now, the cool thing about this is that the Geniverse can support up to two panels, and you can see um, how they're lined up, and we'll take a look at all the wiring as it's going over to the back. Uh, these panels are 
really heavy duty. They're not flimsy in any way. They're very, very sturdy. And what I like about them is, as you see in each one of these corners, um, both sides have handles and they collapse to a very compact size um, and they're magnetic, so they lock into place. And they also have some, um, I would say some clasps that you're gonna see in a second that actually uh, help them stay compact. So you don't have to Velcro them, you don't have to tie them together. Um, they're kind of like an accordion, so when they close, they're gonna close together. Now, the other thing that you'll notice about the panels is that they're also relatively lightweight. I do have them on my pool cover because this is the best angle to get the most sun. And you can see how it has the legs that are coming out. I'm still wearing a jacket, it's a little uh, nippy in Chicago, but still we're getting some really good sunlight. Uh, so these little legs come out, they help you um, angle the actual panel so that you can get the best sunlight. And then what you'll notice is on the corner, and let's go to this corner really quick, you'll notice that there is a cable that's coming out. Uh, that cable that you see right there is actually uh, what's feeding the power to the generator. So that cable comes out and will go back to the same area in the generator where you would plug in your standard AC outlet. Now, this, this generator has a crazy input, uh, I would say, rating. So as I'm plugging this in, I've seen generators take four, 500 watts of power. This thing takes over 1,000 watts of power, which gives it that really, really fast charging capability. Now let's take a look at how these things all connect. Now, as you can see there, we have one solar panel here, another solar panel here, and then they go to the back uh, right there and they connect it. And I can actually hear the solar panel kind of, it has this slight hum or whirl going on as it's taking in power. And what I like about this is again, if you are camping, you're out and about, or you're, let's say you're toll gating, right? Uh, or tailgating, I'm sorry, and you're basically uh, powering TV, refrigerator, blender, whatever you're going to be doing, this is 100% renewable power. You don't have to even plug it in your home. You can actually have this running just by the sun. Now, one of the things that you'll see is that the cables themselves are pretty thick. Um, they look really well gauged, but one of the things I will highlight is I wish they were longer so that I can actually have the panels outside and then the generate inside. And it would have been cool to consolidate them into one plug. Um, you know, a splitter that comes into one so that we can come into the generator that way. But I can hear again, like I mentioned, the generator kind of whirling as it's uh, just taking in the sunlight and then absorbing all that power. And we're getting really good sunlight here. So I got 243 of the potential 400 total watts I'm getting. Um, it's gone from 243 to 343 as well, but not quite 400 yet. But again, 100% renewable. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Geniverse Home Power 2 Pro. See you in the next video.